Vandy's new look offense should provide more explosive plays. You are Locked On Vandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Thanks for making Locked On Vandy your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers. That's right, all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right, there's something for everyone every day all summer long. So visit FanDuel.com to get started. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at LSU, a road trip to Baton Rouge. What Can, Van- can Vandy win this one? Uh, but first, Tim Beck's offense will be dynamic, and in the, in the new-look offense should provide more explosive plays. And we're going to kind of dive into it a little bit because I watched some film. Um, I watched some film, and unfortunately, I can't share that film because it is uh, we, we don't own the actual rights to the film. So what I did was I took the liberties of picking out four plays that I think really stand out and really kind of – define some variety here for uh, Tim Beck's offense and then really kind of tells a story or tell, or gives us a quick snapshot of, of what Vandy's identity is likely going to be. So it's, it's going to be explosive. I think there's a lot of great things uh, out, out there for it. Uh, I think there's a lot of great plays to be had. I think the quarterbacks are going to really contribute in the run game as well. I think what I, what I've noticed in, in watching New Mexico state um, is I've noticed that a lot of the concepts there's there's they focus on pre snap movement they focus on eye candy they focus on formations and looks and things like that presenting the defense with different with different ways of running the same play and those plays can be effective out of a bunch of different looks because of the way your defense has to react to uh, to way the defense is or the way the offense is set. So you can get into many different things. You can stay in the same look and get to a lot of your same stuff out of that same look and and be just as dangerous. So there's a, there's a lot of variety in this in this offense. There's a lot of I don't want to say deception, but there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of Formations. There's a lot of things that can throw a defense off, keep a defense on its heels to where they can't lock in and say, okay, they're in this one formation. They're going to run this one certain play. This is their bread and butter out of this formation. They can do a lot of different things. And I'm, I'm looking forward to investigating uh, even more some of these other different formations. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to try to track down a full game of New Mexico State and, and maybe try to watch that. But um, those are surprisingly hard to come by. But anyway, um, what we're going to start with here, okay, and, and what, I, what I really like about this offense, what's going to make it dynamic and the run game going to be dynamic is the power read, okay? And I, I feel like that's going to be a pretty big staple to what Tim Beck wants to do, whether he uses the jet sweep to go along with it or he uses uh, a full house backfield or just uh, different ways to dress up a, a similar play to where it looks like it's going to be one thing and it's another. And I'll show you kind of uh, one way they get to uh, power option or read option or whatever you want to call it. It's it's quarterback power with a, with a running back on the perimeter. I'm going to show you one way they get to it. It's slightly different in how it looks, but it's the same blocking scheme and the same concepts, just a different way of getting to it. And uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. But the first one I want to show you actually is – this formation right here, this is called a full house backfield. Some people call it a diamond. Um, there's a bunch of different names for this formation. So whatever you think you would call it, feel free. Um, but it's the same blocking scheme essentially uh, with, uh, with what they're trying to do. They want to get the, they want to get the tailback, the, the lead, the, the tailback. They want to get him on the edge in, in a stretch play running back jet, which is hit the same landmark, get as wide as possible, find a crease in the alley and and go. You see uh, right here with the Y and the H, they're leading out on the edge. They're blocking anything which is in that in the alley. And the alley is between the uh is basically between the hash marks and the the uh 
the end man on the line of scrimmage. Okay. And they're trying to take first threats there. And what the quarterback has got his eyes on, and I don't think you can see my cursor, obviously, but what the quarterback has his eyes on is this defensive end right here, this guy that uh, on the on the right side here, or what we call play side, is that end who's unblocked. And so by doing that, it puts that guy in a bind. All right. And by doing that, the offensive line actually – gets a little bit of a break. They don't have to account for that guy. Nobody has to account for that guy. He's going to make himself wrong regardless if Pavia reads it right, which Pavia has shown that he can read it right. Nate Johnson as well is good at reading this play as well. So uh, what I really like about this is you get you get a bunch of down blocks. So the linebackers are going to go – the linebackers, if they're keying in on linemen, they're going to they're gonna step forward. They're going to fill, they're going to fill gaps. They're going to treat it like power. Okay, so it's going to keep those guys from screaming to the outside to stop the back. Okay, those guys are going to get blocked up by uh, by the linemen. So you have the play side tackle blocking down. Everybody's blocking down, and the and the backside guard, which is the left guard in this play, is going to pull around uh, for the play side linebacker. Now, if the play side linebacker decides to vacate, and the end in the end decides to get up field. That's going to make this run very easy for the quarterback. That's what makes this play so dangerous. If that play side linebacker, he's kind of the key of making this thing from a solid play to an explosive play in a hurry because he can be wrong as well. And you're not reading him, but he's somebody that can take himself out of the play. If he gets over aggressive, if he sees a, a down block and then he sees the full back, he sees the tailback go across the formation and, and go out wide. He may decide, hey, I'm going to be a hero and go go chase this thing down. And he may just run himself into a seal block. You'll have a nice little alley uh, right here in the B-gap between the right tackle and right guard. And it's, uh, it's a big play here. It's a big explosive play. And, and next thing you know, you've got a first down plus more. So this formation really draws the formation, the, the defensive formation in tight. As you see, uh, they – they kind of present a 4-4 look in, in kind of a spread personnel package. Uh, sometimes they might be able, if they can diagnose it, they they can be able to run their uh, bigger personnel out on the field for this, which presents some some matchup nightmares if 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 uh, Vandy wants to pass out of the set. So this is a really good set to run out of because there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, it gets the defense thinking you're going to run inside. It gets the defense in – uh, favorable personnel to where you can take advantage of, of some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. You can throw you can throw any of the quick routes, hitch, slant, speed out, uh, double moves, things like that on the outside because essentially you're going to have one-on-one. -on -one. For the most part, it's going to be cover one, which means you got man on the outside, you got a free safety playing over the top, and you've got uh, everybody else dedicated to the box and, and to the run. So this is a really good play, and uh, this is something that – you will see featured uh, with Vandy as they try to look to get the quarterbacks involved in the run game as well. So this is a this is going to be a staple formation, I think, and you're going to see them with the personnel that they have. They can go 12 personnel. They can go 21 personnel here with Eli Stowers in the backfield at the Y, and then your two running backs, Newberry and, and Alexander, as your F and H, which I don't know what they're going to actually call those personnel, but – for the sake of this drawing, it's F and H um, are going to be probably your running back personnel and your Y is probably going to be your uh, your tight end or maybe even they go 30 personnel, which is three backs. You know, you know they could they could do a bunch of different things here. So uh, that's uh, that's the first way they're going to get to. And I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be their bread and butter run play uh, or at least their bread and butter quarterback run play. So uh, be uh, be alert for that. Now, um, here's another way that they like to get to it which uh, on the back side of it where you see X and H, they could do a bunch of different things because they are really kind of irrelevant. So they may try to do some, some fast screen stuff over there, some pre-snap RPO looks, but um, this looks kind of more like a, kind of like a draw, kind of like a downhill, um, you know, no tight end power, but what it ends up being is the same thing. The same thing we just saw quarterback is looking downhill. He is reading that defensive end who's shaded in blue and depending on the read this defensive end uh, presents, he could pitch the ball or he could he could take off running upfield. Now, with this formation, with this particular formation, typically um, what what I've seen is they end up pitching the ball because they've got this guy immediately out 
immediately outflanked, and they got two blockers on the outside. So really, it presents as power option, but it's a way to really essentially get the ball out on the perimeter because this defensive end, when he sees the tackle block down, he's not going to react very fast. So your favorable numbers are actually out on the perimeter here. So instead of the back flashing across, he's going to immediately get into pitch relationship and it's going to really turn into a speed option, which is a step-step pitch for the quarterback because of the favorable numbers you have on the outside. So this is this is a way that if the quarterback is involved heavily in the run game, that New Mexico State in this scenario did a really good job of, of getting guys into the box because they are fearful of the run. And I think you'll see that a little bit of this at Vandy as well. What they did in the game against UTEP was they, they really got guys down into the box to, to stop the run because they've been running power read so successfully all season long that um, when as soon as that tackle blocked down and the guard started to wrap, you saw the box kind of collapse a little bit and you saw them able to get out flanked here. And I think this turned into a 15 yard gain, if I remember correctly. Um, when I was I saw a bunch of these. So some of the some of the yardage and the stats on some of these plays are starting to kind of run together. So um, but this is, you know, this is something that, you know, these are a couple of plays in the run game that I think can get a lot of things ignited. Now with this play being out of this formation, I think it it really strikes fear into the defense because there's a lot of things you can do out of that formation in the past game. So defenses are kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't, where you know where they choose to um, defend and how much space they choose to give, and that could uh, that could open up things a lot uh, in the run game and in the quarterback run game as well. So, um, and there's also some some play action, some RPO stuff they can do, and obviously uh, Vandy's going to implore some. Uh, some some shot plays as well. We'll talk about all of those and creating more explosives off of the run game. We'll talk about all of that next. All right, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports just aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up any bets at any time I'm in the mood, like the Olympics. Like I can just go on there and just put a few Olympic bets in there and let's let's see what we got. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers. That's right, all customers. Isn't that nice? With a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball and, of course, the Olympics, too. All right, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN and you really get annoyed because you have to turn the volume down, not only on the commercials, but when they're shouting at each other? Well, um, what you need to do is make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. That's the nice part. So Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you. Shout out to the everydayers. Thank you guys uh, for making all this possible. We uh, couldn't do it without you. Um, we, uh, we, we we dig that you're, uh, that you're into the channel and uh, keep spreading the word. Uh, Bo Allen, this episode is dedicated to you, um, actually, because uh, we uh, he left me a message on X, um, at Coach Burton 36 and at Locked On Vandy, asking for some film review and – even though I couldn't actually get you some real life film, this is the next best thing. Okay. So um, I, I actually did some drawing. So here we go. Um, but speaking of film, we, we, we've talked to run game a little bit and power read, I think is going to be an absolute staple of what Tim Beck wants to do here at Vandy as well, because he's got some guys, he's got a couple guys in the pipeline that can really run this concept. Um, he's got a bunch of guys in the pipeline. Actually, he's got Nate Johnson, well, starting with Diego Pavia, um, but we got Nate Johnson after that. Um, I think uh, St. Hilaire and Muschamp can both run this as well and, and and be very, very effective at running this downhill where, you know, Muschamp is more of a tough downhill runner like Pavia and St. Hilaire is more of a smooth guy, kind of like Nate Johnson, where Nate Johnson is pretty explosive. I don't think Hilaire is quite as explosive as that. But um, one of the things that you'll see, 
with Tim Beck's offense is uh, what I mentioned earlier, um, it, you know, at the start of the show, where you have a lot of motions and things and a lot of things to draw defenders away from certain areas and then coming back to attack those areas. Well, I, I think one of the things that you may see, uh, it's a pretty popular RPO at this point, and it forces defenders to kind of stay put, which, you know, even though these are smaller gains, um, it opens up bigger gains um, out of the same formation uh, because defenses, when they see some of these motions, they aren't as quick to move, and now they're not as in good a position to defend what else is coming off of these formations. So uh, the first thing is a tight end RPO, um, and it may be just more of a play action, um, but it, it is actually kind of serves um, – you could kind of classify it as an RPO or a play action. I think this act, I think the action in this game kind of on this particular play kind of lend itself to, he was going to pull it uh, the whole time. We just wanted to get some, get some defenders moving. So um, what you have here is a pre-snap jet motion um, where he screams across. And as soon as you snap the ball, it's kind of like, all right, fake here, uh, ride this, uh, ride the back coming across on an outside zone play. The offensive line is blocking uh, zone outside zone. They're kind of trying to uh, trying to wall defenders to where they're blocking for this fullback to be able to cut back in between the play side guard and tackle, which in this scenario was the right guard and right tackle, or cut off of the right tackle to the outside. Either way, they're trying to set up outside zone here, um, and then using the jet sweep to kind of pull some of these edge guys wider so they can create a crease right here off of this tackle. Um, if in fact they do read this as an RPO, now. Uh, you have a little bit of cross action, um, so it, it's kind of like a wide wide zone, split zone type scenario where your offensive line is not necessarily blocking inside zone because they're not going as downhill. Uh, they're going a little bit wider, but they're not stretching like it's like true stretch or outside zone where you're trying to get outside quickly. It's kind of more of like a in between mid zone, wide zone type deal where you have split action coming from uh, from the Y coming across formation. Now, um, as he comes across the formation, he's hiding. So these defenders are seeing all this motion happening. They don't see the Y coming back across. And in, in this particular game, it's pretty evident. You have Eli Stowers, who's extremely athletic. You'll have um, also uh, some other guys as well uh, coming across this uh, formation and. Uh, getting themselves into space right here. Now, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of space to be had because this is going into the boundary and you only have one guy for seemingly two. But these guys, these defenders on this this will defender, this W defender, this free safety in this corner are all kind of preoccupied with this jet motion for a split second. So they're all kind of rotating a little bit. The corner is going to naturally rotate back just a little bit and the free safety and strong safety are going to kind of rotate over just in case they do. And if they don't, they may come back and say, okay, these guys didn't rotate. So we're going to give it on the jet sweep and we're going to really outflank these guys and get a big play. And so it's almost like they have to honor that. And so what, what, what's really tough for these guys is if they don't honor that, you've got guys like Micah Bell here or Quincy Skinner that are so fast, Jeremiah Dillon even, that are so fast that if they get this thing on the jet sweep, they could really make a big play out of it. So you have to kind of honor that. But now you've got an extremely athletic tight end who is also going to be an X factor coming back across the formation, catching into space. Quarterback pulls off of the, 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 the tailback here and then dumps it to the Y. And uh, you see his little boot action here. He's going to kind of outflank this defensive end who's more likely going to going to crash and then chase as he sees the quarterback pulling the ball. So the quarterback's going to kind of outflank him. The Y is going to get up under that. He's just going to kind of dump it over his head a little bit. And this X is going to block most dangerous, either the corner coming down or that safety, that free safety redirecting to come down. He's going to kind of block most dangerous and the Y is going to be responsible for the other guy and making him miss and being an athlete and earning his scholarship. So what I love about this play um, is what I love about Tim Beck's offense all in one nutshell. Okay. This right here, when you say Vandy's offense is going to be the same old thing, this right here tells me it's not. Okay. Because I, and it probably did exist, but I don't remember seeing it. I don't remember seeing much of anything identity wise uh, from Vandy's offense a year ago. But now you have motions and things uh, of this nature. 
it really, what I love about it is it takes the pressure off of those five guys up front, whoever those five guys are going to be. Um, it takes pressure off of those guys and forces them or it gives them lighter boxes. It makes them right. Most of the time makes defenders wrong. Most of the time where it sets up better angles and really kind of forces the defensive line to kind of play back across from adverse situations and really kind of be special to make a play. Now, some of these guys can be ultra special. Like if this will is a dude is an NFL dude, he could theoretically redirect and go chase this thing down for a minimal game. That's possible, all right? But it's going to take that being an NFL dude for for that to happen, I think. And and this could this could go for an easy first down. This could go for five yards. Five yards here is very successful um, for for this particular play because of what it sets up. Okay, you're not you're not necessarily looking for this play to go house. You're looking for the play that comes off of this, which is. Jet, which is jet, split motion across, stalk, go, play action. Now you're hitting your X after everybody's kind of crashing down one way or the other, or you hit a backside post coming from the Z. Those are some things that can come off of this play. So that's how you're that's how you're now getting into shot plays. But here's a very simple shot shot play, and you'll recognize this formation a little bit. Uh, they've they've tweaked it a little bit, but it's the same essential formation where it is a two-by-two two look, but now you're putting your tight end to the boundary, which you are um, you're, you're telling your, your defense, hey, this is a boundary-type run formation where you could go inside zone, you could go lock power, um, you could do a lot of different things here. Um, you know, your, your, uh, your power read fake, your, or your power read speed option uh, play is 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 up here. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do in the run game. Um, but what what New Mexico State did uh, in this scenario uh, against UTEP was they 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 took a shot here. Okay, and out here wide with your X and H, it's kind of a wash because those guys are just going to switch off, and you know it's just going to be like, can this dude beat that dude, right? Can the H beat the corner? Can my dude beat your dude over here to the wide side? Um, but where this play really happens and where it's really dynamic, and this, again, takes advantage of having a really athletic tight end that could run the field and stretch the field, is that Y coming across because that corner is now stuck in a – this corner, it, based on this look, is kind of stuck in no man's land a little bit because that Z is flashing across his face and getting up the seam. And that free safety in that corner, oftentimes when plays like this hit, it's because they didn't communicate, right? The free safety assumes the corner's uh, going to sink with that or is going to run with that seam route, and he kind of stays off it a little bit, and that corner ends up dropping off on the on the wheel, and you have a big play to the seam. But in this particular play that's drawn up, it's the Y that hits the big play, and I think he actually scores on that. So um, this is a play that, again, Eli Stowers can uh, – can can really take advantage of down the uh, down the numbers a little bit. You get a cornerback that kind of gets lost in traffic. Uh, some you get an inexperienced guy over there, or you get a young guy over there, and sometimes they can get kind of caught up in the heat of the moment. Run with that Z receiver, especially if it's man coverage. If it's man coverage, and that's and that strong safety or Sam Backers trying to run with this tight end right here on the line. I'm going to take that all day, every day. That's going to be a huge play. So these are shot plays that Vandy really uh, will take advantage of. These are four plays that I think um, that can uh, that you need to watch out for, especially with Eli Stowers as your uh, as your X factor at Y. I think it opens up a lot of these shot plays, these RPO plays, if you can get the run game going. So um, all that's going to be important as they navigate the schedule. The schedule is going to be tough. They have a trip to Baton Rouge. What's that going to look like? You know, where's Vandy? Depending on where Vandy's season is, it could be a very, very interesting game. We'll, we'll very briefly touch on that next. All right. Talking about Ibotta. It's summertime, which means it's barbecue season. I love barbecue season. Stock up on all your grilling favorites and earn cash back on every purchase when you use Ibotta. So you won't have to choose between burgers or hot dogs. Guess what? 
You can get both. Ibotta is a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. Earn hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies and even toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip or that flight you've been eyeing or that fancy dinner you've been craving. Other apps, they give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you earn cash back that you can withdraw to your bank account, PayPal, or even in in gift cards. You can simply add offers in the app, upload your receipt, and voila, money's yours. You can save over... You can save on over 2,400 2, brands and shop at over 1,000 retailers, including your favorite grocery stores, or Lowe's or Macy's or Sephora, Best Buy, and more. It's time you joined over 50 million users who use Ibotta to earn cash back every time they shop. So right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code Locked On College when you register. Just go to the app or just go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download the free I bought an app and start earning cash back and use code Locked On College. That's I B O T T A in the Google Play or App Store and use code Locked On College. All right, factor. Warmer, sunnier days are calling. Fuel up, fuel up for them with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for summer thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. You can crush your wellness goals this May with dietitian-approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious. From breakfast to dessert, stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant-quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, no prepping, no cooking, or cleanup. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences that help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced. So head to factormeals.com slash college 50 and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE5050 at factormeals.com slash Locked on college 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Thank you for making locked on Vandy your first listen. Thank you for Thank you for joining us here on the Locked On Vandy Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. Uh, thank you to the everydayers. Make sure. Up next, you you check out Locked On SEC. Chris Gordy does a phenomenal job uh, with that show. So, uh, really quickly, uh, I guess we'll cover it in, in a future episode here. But um, LSU is is an interesting game for uh, for Vandy um, on the road. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, decide if Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be able to rec- to replace Jaden Daniels, the Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, they've got to replace Malik Neighbors. They've got to They've got a bunch of things to replace, a bunch of a uh, bunch of playmakers actually uh, to replace. Um, but they have to, um, in in lieu of that, they have recruited really, really well actually, and so um, they they're they're going to have a really good run game. Um, it's going to be Kyron Lacy, Caleb Jackson, Josh Williams. Uh, it's going to be kind of like a committee type um, type feel to that. Um, as well. And then the defense is going to be, uh, uh, they can really only kind of, kind of go up uh, because they were kind of terrible. They they would have been in the national championship uh, race and contention and all that stuff had their defense not been so atrocious. So um, they can only kind of really go up from here. But with this game, with this trip to Baton Rouge, with, you know, I, it, you have to think that it's just a, you know, when you walk in, it's just immediately a tough place to play. And for Vandy, they're going to have to overcome a lot of that, which I think Pavia 
and Jerry Kill and those guys aren't afraid of those type of environments. I mean, they've walked into harsh environments and won uh, at New Mexico State. Why couldn't they at Vandy at this point? Um, but, you know, after a grind of an SEC schedule uh, for, for Vandy at this point in the season, they will have played Auburn, South Carolina, Texas, Bama, and Missouri in conference. They would have played um, they would have played Virginia Tech out of conference, and then their three other um, I don't want to say cupcakes, but easier games. So um, this is uh, this is kind of at a at a point in the season where Vandy season it could be they could be riding high, and you know you never know with with these two teams because uh, we don't know exactly what LSU is going to bring to the table yet. If they fall apart. You know, that could be a game that you could say, ooh, Vandy went up and got LSU. And even if LSU's bad, it doesn't matter. You beat LSU in Baton Rouge. That's always a big deal. No matter how you slice it nice, and people will try to spin it that way. But who knows? Anyway, that's all we're going to, uh, that's all I got for you today. This was a little bit of a film study, kind of get you ready for what you may see every Saturday. I um, hope you, if you enjoyed what you liked uh, at Locked on Vandy on all social media platforms, but until tomorrow, we'll see you back. Uh, we'll see you back here then actually tomorrow on another episode of Locked on the Locked on Vandy podcast on the Locked on Podcast Network. Behave yourselves. Anchor down.